Hi everyone and welcome to day 4 of the 10 on 10 series. This is where we are placed where we are going to discuss 10 image spotters for microbiology. But before that we have to give the answers of yesterday's homework which were 5 questions based on granulosa cell tumour that I asked you. The answers are as following. The bodies that you see, these round bodies with pink material in the centre are called Exner bodies. The nuclei show you grooves which look like a coffee bean nucleus. The tumour marker is in Hibin. Then there is a CD marker that is CD99 positive. Please note CD99 is positive both in granulosa cell tumour of the ovary as well as Ewing sarcoma in the bone. And lastly the gene mutation was asked and that is the Fox L2 gene mutation. So most of you in fact 99% of you gave me a correct answer yesterday and that's amazing. So we'll be starting with 10 images of microbiology today. Let's get going with the first one which is a must know for every exam and hence I'm starting with it. What is the cell that has been shown over here without any history if I ask you and the organism leading to it? In case you need a history then this is a pap smear that has been done and this is a cervical biopsy and now I think you know we are talking about the coelocyte. Coelocyte is defined as a cell which is going to have a very dark raisinoid nucleus, a shriveled raisin, raisin is kishmish, that's a dry fruit. So it looks very shriveled like like that and around the nucleus there is a whitish area known as perinuclear halo. So when I zoom into it I will be able to see a very shriveled irregular nucleus and a white area around it that is perinuclear halo and pap smear also. Same thing when I try to locate on a cervical biopsy I can visualize that there is a shriveled nucleus, raisinoid nucleus with perinuclear halo. Without a doubt this is caused by the virus human papilloma virus. In fact it is the E4 and the E5 proteins of HPV that are responsible for the coelocytic change. Well that gets us to the the first homework of today where you are going to tell me that where else, especially in renal cell carcinoma, do you see a cell with the same raisinoid nucleus and the perinuclear halo. This is of course in renal cell carcinoma not known as coelocyte but it is known as something else and the tumour, the type of RCC where it is seen is what you will tell me. Moving on to the second image of the day where we have a characteristic rice water stools. I think based on that Vibrio cholera is a question that has always been asked. The test that is being performed over here has been asked and that we know is going to be the string test. Now string test I have taught you earlier also for a couple of organisms but please note if the string test is being done within the human being then it is done for a parasite that is known as Giardia lamblia. However if it is being done in the microbiology lab number one it is done for Vibrio cholera as in this case. The second one that for which we do a string test is going to be Klebsiella and we had done this in our LRR series as well as our image based series as well. Another question regarding rice water stools and Vibrio cholera is the mechanism of action how it acts and that is by increase in cyclic AMP. Moving on to question 3 is a test that has been shown over here and these are a classical set of test tubes more important for NEAT PG than FMG exam and this is known as the IMVIC testing. IMVIC stands for I for indole testing, M for methyl red, VP for Vague's Proscure or even you can learn it as VP test and C for citrate utilization test so together known as the IMVIC test. The method of giving them positive or negative is for the first three tubes we call it positive if we get a red color. So red color will indicate that this is a positive reaction whereas in citrate if we get a blue color that indicates it's a positive reaction. So let us get going and they're always given in the order of the four tubes as IMVIC. So when I label this, them as IMVIC over here I can see that here I see a red color means indole is positive. Again methyl red has come out to be positive. Here I don't see a red color so this is negative and here I don't see a blue color so this means this is also negative. Here the test is positive, positive, negative, negative and that is indicative of E. coli. On the other hand in the invic tubes that are given below if I look carefully no red color no red color so negative negative. VP is showing a red color so positive and citrate is showing a blue color so positive. Here it is minus minus plus plus that makes it Klebsiella. So please note E. coli is plus plus minus minus and Klebsiella is minus minus plus plus on the invic testing important for the NEAT PG exam. Moving on to question 4 is a life cycle that was asked a few years ago both in FMG and in NEAT back to back and hence I've got it here. What you can see characteristically is how the infection is occurring that is via the skin. Now whenever skin penetration has been asked in the exam you will think of three organisms. Number one is going to be schistosoma. Schistosoma all of you know is a trematode and it is going to have snail in the life cycle. I don't see a snail over here. So schistosoma is ruled out. The next one is known as ankylostoma which is also known as hookworm that is going to show you eggs. I don't see any hookworm like OO eggs over here segmented eggs. So hookworm is also ruled out. The 
third one that I'm left with is going to be strong hyaloids and this is the life cycle of strong hyaloid stercoralis coming through the skin. Please note the form of strong hyaloids which is penetrating through the skin is known as the filary form larva. However, the form that we are going to see in the stool sample finally is known as rhabditi form larva. A question that came in the previous year NEET PG and FMG exam was which is the organism that can show parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis means that female is capable of doing reproduction even in the absence of a male. So that is an asexual reproduction or parthenogenesis can be learnt as a single parent. So this strong hyaloids female is very strong and she is able to become a parent on her own and that is asexual reproduction by the female known as parthenogenesis. Now I told you right now that infection occurs by filary form larva but how you do the diagnosis is by rhabditi form larva which means microscopic examination I will be seeing rhabditi form larva which is identified by the fact that it shows a double bulbed esophagus. When I say double bulb it means it's a constriction so let me zoom into it I can see that at the body I have a double or a constriction that is happening that is known as a double bulb esophagus. Let us look at another picture this of course must be the end the tail end pointed so I go to the other end. Now in the other end when I start tracing I see a narrow stricture happening right in the middle that is known as a double bulb esophagus seen in the rhabditi form larva of strong hyaloid stercoralis. Moving on to question 5, I've been kind enough to show you that yes, this is a lymph node in the posterior cervical region and this is also going to be known as the winter bottom sign. So just the disease is what you have to tell me. W for W, winter bottom sign is seen in West African sleeping sickness. So the question is who causes it and what is the vector? So please note it is caused by Trypanosoma brucei gambian. So it is of course a sleeping sickness, African sleeping sickness as we studied and we always used to study that SS, sleeping sickness is caused by the CC fly. Whether it is the East African sleeping sickness or the West African, it both are caused by CC fly but the difference is that the East African sleeping sickness would have been caused by the organism Trypanosoma brucei rhodesians whereas the West African sleeping sickness is caused by Trypanosoma brucei gambians and West African sleeping sickness shows W for W winter bottom sign which is a lymph node. Moving on to question 6 is a microscopic examination where you had to pick up that this is a fluorescent microscope which is done for fungus. And the name of the stain that has been used over here is the calcoflarvite. If you look carefully, the calcofluor, fluor will tell you that this is a fluorescent microscopy stain. Then you will study the word calco. Calco will tell you that what part of the uh, fungus is it binding to? It binds to the chitin in the cell wall. That is why can you see the entire fungus has not come out to be fluorescent. It is only the outer cell wall that has come out to be fluorescent over here like an outline because calcoflar white is going and binding to the outer chitin part of the cell wall. So calcoflar white fluorescent stain for fungus. Moving on to question 7 is a famous microscope which I am sure you have identified. The electron microscope which was given by the scientist Ernst Truska and now the questions are set on this that what is the source of of course, are you using any light or anything over here? Of course not. Electron microscope tells me I'm using electrons and if I'm using electrons, that is why it has to be closed from all around because the medium that has to be maintained has to be a vacuum. Now comes the most, uh, you know, obvious question is that if you want to send a sample for electron microscopy testing, what is finally the uh, fixative that you're going to use? And that is 2 to 2.5% glutaraldehyde is the fixative that we are going to use. For light microscopy, I hope you remember it is going to be 10% neutral buffered formalin. The next one is a life cycle again where we can see the definitive host is a cat and that makes it a coccidian parasite that is Toxoplasma gondii which we had learned that is in the name itself of Toxoplasma we had drawn three cats for us to remember it. So of course the definitive host is going to be a cat but then what is the infective stage? The cat is going to pass oocyst but initially when the cat passes fresh or new feces that oocyst does not have sporulation happen so that is not infective to us. As time will pass and as it will become old shit or old feces it is that old shit that is going to be infective to us so that is going to result in sporulation. Remember it's the sporulated oocyst where the sporulation has occurred that is going to get contaminated into our food and water and thereby it is going to come into the human beings. Now the second one is going to be bradyzoid and tachyzoid. We have learnt a mnemonic called BTBT which means that if I say B for bradyzoid you will say T for tissue. It is going to come via the tissue. So what is tissue? If it is coming through an animal it could be meat. If it is coming from human beings it could be some kind of organ transplant. So via organ transplant it is the tissue that is coming in our body. So bradyzoid is coming. On the other hand if I say tachyzoid then you will say B that is going to be blood. So anything related to blood whether 
whether you're getting a blood transfusion, you're getting tachyzoid, whether it is mother to child and blood is going, that is also going to be the tachyzoid that is going. So repeating once again, sporulated oocyst, bradyzoid and tachyzoid, all are infective stages of toxoplasma gondii. Moving on to question 9, is the diagnosis that you have to do on the basis of this peripheral smear given to you? I hope you could identify this is the case of Plasmodium falciparum based on the banana shaped gametocyte that I have shown you over here, the classical banana shaped gametocyte and now you need to tell me that which is male and female. Males of course are going to have broader ends and females are going to have very slender pointed ends but more than that you have to look at the nuclear chromatin. In males everything is spread out so look at the brown color nuclear chromatin, it is all scattered. In females, everything is well organized in this picture and in life, I would say. So it is always the nuclear chromatin that is more organized. In fact, the male gametocyte is known as microgametocyte and the female gametocyte is known as macrogametocyte. So you can clearly see that there is a certain bias towards females over here where all the important words have been given to females and all the organization and positive points have been named after the female gametocyte. This is of Plasmodium falciparum and we know it causes the classical cerebral malaria which is also known as the malignant malaria. Moving on to the last image that we have for the day is another life cycle which I hope you could identify where you can have a mosquito here. A natural cycle is happening with the birds and amplification is happening with the pigs and then we are also present somewhere as the accidental host and this happens to be the life cycle of Japanese encephalitis. The vector of course is going to be the culex. Now the natural cycle that is happening with the birds is known as the ardeed birds. So mostly this is the life cycle happening between culex and RD bird but if this has to get amplified the amplifier host is going to be the pig and when this cycle happens between culex and pig the virus ends up getting amplified and then there is a risk that it might reach us so we then become the accidental host. Now the homework number two that comes up in front of you is the new vaccine for Japanese encephalitis. Please don't write SA 1442 because that we have already discussed earlier. I want you to tell me the new vaccine for Japanese encephalitis and do you know what kind of a preparation is it? Is it killed or live attenuated? What is the strain by which it is produced? So whatever PSM knowledge you have about this vaccine, you have to tell me. So these are the two homeworks that you have. Number one, I told you for raisinoid nucleus and perinuclear halo, one is HPV. You need to tell me similar appearance in which RCC. The second is a Japanese encephalitis vaccine that you will be telling me. Well, these two days of image spotters are done for us. Now the next two days, that is one for path and one for micro, will be coming back to 10 MCQ solving, which I'll be doing in the subsequent days. I hope you're enjoying this series. Wishing you all the very best. Study well.